Hi everyone, Barry McFarland. I'm here from My Dharma. And so My Dharma, Dharma is my duty or my calling. I am a life and transition coach. And if I could summarize in one sentence uh, what I do, I help people connect to their purpose, um, bring more meaning, joy, and love to their life. And I've discovered five keys that unlock the door to that kind of life that we'd like to share with you. And this is Serge Grandbois. Serge has been channeling a non-physical being called Chris for close to 35 years. So I'd like to pass it over to you, Serge. Um, the folks um, in my network, some of them are very familiar with channeling and uh, what a non-physical being is and others aren't. So I kind of want them to get to know you and who you are and how did you start channeling? Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> from a very young age, I became curious about things we were not supposed to investigate, especially coming from the uh, I guess a Roman Catholic family background. Um, you're supposed to go to school and get ready to go into the the mainstream of society, and uh, you know, get married, have kids, pay your bills, and then die. Um, that doesn't sound like fun. <laughs> no, it's kind of. A, even at that age, I knew it was going to be boring. Um, so I had to have a little something else, not knowing what that means. And uh, I distinctly remember one time waiting to cross the street maybe nine years of age, um, suddenly wondering about the people waiting also to cross the street and thinking, geez, I wonder what makes them think the things they think and do the things they do. And they realize, oh, that's much too deep for me. Mm -hmm. um, but the question or questions have um, spurred a lifelong quest, a search for an answer to them. And though I have had received many answers. I also want to make sure that I keep searching, exploring, and discovering new things that are related to that. And eventually, um, about 33 to 35 years ago, I discovered that I could channel. Um, and it took a little while to understand and come to terms with that phenomenon in my life. Um, but it brought some of the answers I'd been searching for since I was a kid. Mm -hmm. And with that under my belt, I guess I got a first-hand view of how that changed my life and brought changes to other people's lives. Um, so that is very important to me, and it, I've been doing it for so long now, it's actually more than half my life. Mm -hmm. um, I consider it gonna grab a book. what Keep I'm talking. about. Mm -hmm. I, I consider it that this is me. Um, even though I have my own distinct identity and personality and everything else, um, Chris has his own traits. And uh, by the way, Chris is a name I gave him, um, <clears throat> and he was fine with it, so we went with that. Um, so it's been a very long journey, and I'm sure it's not finished. I anticipate easily another 20 or more years, maybe 30 years, uh, continued exploration. Uh, which means that there are very few people around that have been channeling for that long. I just happen to be one of those. Um, so I'll turn it over back to Barry and see what happens. Thank you, Serge. And so some of you might be familiar with uh, the Law of Attraction and The Secret and um, Abraham. So Abraham is an entity or an essence like Chris So and um, uh, Esther Hicks. Uh, channels Abraham so like Esther's like Serge so I first um, well not channeling didn't come into uh, understanding channeling but I read this book many lives many masters uh, by dr. Brian Weiss quite a few years ago and what uh, and this story is about a psychiatrist who through uh, working with a client of his through hypnosis uh, ended up um, connecting with what I'll say is like an essence like a Chris which the book as I said many lives many masters um, Dr. Brian Weiss calls them masters so what it did for me 
was just kind of give me that comfort level and that confirmation again that there's more than what we see here right and um, and I was always one of these people as Serge said about you know always wondering why do I think the way I think you know what do I do where do, where do I come from what there's got to be more than this so um, about I guess it was five years ago I started my own coaching business I left my government job and over those years in working with people what I noticed was there was usually five keys or five things that either kept them stuck uh, one or more of these five things so what I'd like to do is I would like to invite Chris in and uh, and then have a conversation and share with you these five keys and then afterwards we're going to talk about uh, this program that we've developed this has actually um, been uh, percolating since I started my business I've always had this um, vision of having a year-long coaching and mentoring program where I can help people again connect to their purpose their give more meaning to their life more joy more love live life in more ease and grace so uh, when I met uh, Serge and Chris this year what a perfect partnership and uh, coming together uh, enlightened alliance as uh, Janet and Chris Atwood like to call them um, I believe that this is and will take what I can share with you to the next level so that's the reason for me bringing Chris in so and Sarah's and Chris in so we can invite uh, mm -hmm. Chris in Well, we trust that you and your audience is comfortable. Yes, sir. And we thank you for your very Facebook-like consideration. And <laughs> thank you for yours. So, Chris and everyone, if you're just joining, if you are joining Facebook and you're on there live, please, you know, send a little like or a love and uh, feel free to write comments. This is the first time that we've done this, so I don't know that we'll be able to <laughs> read the comments and, and answer them, but I will later. So, uh, thank you, Chris, for joining, as, um, as you know, because I know you're always kind of waiting in the wings and hearing what's going on. We're going to go over the five keys to help people live their life on purpose live a life filled with more joy um, and to take something that you have said before from our last workshop around bring more power go go from powerless to powerful right take control back of their lives so the first key that I believe to living that kind of life is getting clear right so if you don't have a pen and piece of pen or a piece of paper and a pen grab one now because I'm gonna go th we're gonna go through these five five keys and, um, and and as we go through from key to key I'm gonna pass it over to Chris as well and get his feedback so clarity so clarity is the first key if you don't know what you want how are you gonna bring it into your life right getting clear about what that purposeful on fire uh, joyful life looks like and in addition to that being clear about exactly who you are and what I know is we are more than our body and there's more than what we see here and by evidence of uh, Chris and uh, this conversation we know there's more so if that's the case what happened to me when I read that book many lives many masters was this realization that there was a lot more that I could tap into than, um, than was available to me and what I could see and touch. And so when things would happen, uh, there was like this inner knowing that I was more than what I was just experiencing. So bringing it back to, from the standpoint of clarity on what do you want, so often what also happens to us is, you know, as we grow up, we wear so many masks, right? We're 
either the smart student or the you know the good child um, the peacekeeper I was the peacekeeper in my family and in keeping everything and the happy child and um, you know or maybe you're the victim or or uh, the um, the warrior in your family you know and so who are you really who is your true authentic self and being able to connect get out of your head and into your heart and connect with what do you really love and one of my um, the, the tool that I I've come across like most self-help books say the same thing just in a different way and the tool that I came across that did the um, that that helped me the most or really I really connected with was the passion test and actually I have that with me I brought a few books with me so the passion test written by Janet Bray Atwood and Chris Atwood this is all about getting out of your head and into your heart and connecting with what it is that you love and first getting really really clear on on what it is as opposed to the how so often we get stuck in the how and then that stops us from getting clear so the first step is getting clear so Chris um, can you add to that what would you how would you add to this key of clarity and getting clear Indeed. so we will utilize one thing you mentioned but did not quite mention at the very beginning when you ask everyone if they could grab a piece of pen yes. and some paper. Yeah. So clarity means, do you want a piece of pen and some paper, or do you want a piece of paper and a pen? So that put things in perspective. And it is a very important first stage. Many, many individuals, if not most, have a literal merry-go-round of ideas that encircle their consciousness over and over and over again, wondering if this is what they want. Will this make them happy? Will that make them happy? Will this other thing make them happy? And this often creates a cloud of confusion or fogginess, which withholds the individual's ability to see clearly clarity seeing clearly mm -hmm. so let us put it to you in this small way so would you mind moving the camera just enough to see the chandelier above the chandelier above oh, okay Indeed. yes mm -hmm. so this is a nice chandelier all crystal and very shiny it is very clear it has the ability to be dimmed, meaning you can increase the light or decrease the light. You can put it back now. So we use this because once you can determine a little better what it is that you desire, what it is that you want, what you are aiming for, then you are like this chandelier the light of your awareness becomes brighter you can see further into yourself your connection with reality and how that can become mm, advantageous to you as opposed to walking around in a dark room without any proper lighting where as many parents have experienced walking into a dark room in the middle of the night barefoot and stepping on your child's Lego blocks. Mm. Mm. So it can be a painful experience. And this we want to connect with the title of your website, My Dharma. Because your Dharma, your purpose, is to facilitate fulfillment. Mm -hmm. So your Dharma becomes somebody else's Dharma. And their Dharma becomes your Dharma. Mm -hmm. So there is a relationship that exists with every single individual that you come in contact with and that can be cultivated in such a way that as you become clearer, their purpose becomes clearer to them. Mm -hmm. Because if you are not clear, how can they become clear? 
Exactly. So it is a symbiotic relationship. It works together. There is a togetherness. And that togetherness, that oneness, extends to all individuals that you meet. That is why, without necessarily realizing it, you are far more empathic than you recognize. Mm. Does that make sense to you? Yes, it does. <coughs> and I, I'd also like to just point out, like what you said there, for everyone on the line and is going to watch this, is especially as parents, so whether women or men, but as parents, so often it's all about the children or, you know, if your children and you're concerned about your, your um, aging parents, the point you just made there about coming back to self, like sometimes we feel like being selfish is bad, that thinking about ourselves and getting clear about what we want, because as you grow up, I remember it's like, no, not about what I want, it's about, what everybody else wants or needs, etc. Like, you know, not to be selfish. And your point there was that need to go in and get clear for yourself so then Indeed. it will become clear for the others that you are connected to. If you are not clear, especially if you are raising a child, then it will become even more difficult mm. because your Selfish needs will take priority over your selfless needs. Mm. And put it this way. A parent raising a child is doing double duty. They're not only raising their physical child, they're also raising their inner child. And that is a very important point to keep in mind. Mm, like that. Does that make sense to you? Yes, it does. So it increases the level of maturity if one travels down that road. Mm. And if you do, with more clarity, more focus, as you will be talking about soon, then the way, the road to travel becomes much easier. You do not have to concern yourself overly with obstacles mm. because you can see further along the path than if you are concerned otherwise. Does that make sense to you? Yes, it does. Mm. Yes. So clarity is a primal stage towards maturity and individuation both in terms of your parenting of your life but also in terms of your psychological self your psyche mm. as a true individual an authentic sovereign being mm. does it make sense to you yes it does Andy? Please feel free to continue. All right, thank you. And I, you know, one of the first things that you said around clarity that sometimes we can get stuck in this circle of consciousness over and over. And what I find is, which brings us to the second key, which is focus. So you could be clear about what you want, but not necessarily focused. On that you're focused on all the things that are going wrong or why it can't work or on the how as opposed to again focusing on what it is that you want so the first thing with regard to, with regards to focus is we need to start noticing our thoughts if, if you don't even know what's going through your head then how can you how, how, how do you how do you, again how do you even notice that right so the first thing is notice what you're thinking and what I've also found in on that front is that if if my mind doesn't tell me if I don't consciously know oh wait what did I just say there all oh, this will never work is my body will tell me so when I am focused on what I don't want I feel depressed I feel sad I feel angry I feel I feel depressed um, I feel um, fear and so when I notice my body feeling that way then I stop myself and say okay what have I been thinking about you know just as an example this project this this year of year of awakening program that that we have starting in January I was so excited about it and you know envisioning it and thinking oh this is gonna be great and then suddenly I realized okay I'm feeling really nervous and I'm all of this and that and it's like okay what is this about? And then I realized I was focusing on, oh my God, this is never going to work. And, you know, are people really going to sign up for this? And why are they going to listen to me? And so you get, I get, you get into this loop. So 
I went back to clarity, get clear about what I want. Why am I doing this year of awakening program? What do I want out of it? What do I want other people? And then again, noticing those thoughts and coming back to focusing on that which I want rather than what I don't want. What do you think, Chris? Indeed, you uh, certainly not the only individual who undergoes such trepidation, self-doubting, second-guessing, wondering if there is any validity to the creative ideas that come through you mm. and how you can grab onto them and go for a ride. Mm. And many people will quickly abandon the project because going along for the ride with these marvelous ideas often means moving out of your comfort zone, mm -hmm. taking a risk, perhaps even risking failure, mm. and summarizing and surmising that it will fail anyway. So why put any energy? And of course, such a train of thought is self-prophesying. Exactly. Because it, it will happen. And exactly the thoughts that follow through in your mind. But what if somehow or other you began to clearly focus on a particular set of ideas that thrust the creativity, follow through, and lo and behold, instead of crashing and burning before you even took off, you are taking off. Mm. Something is happening. But that, again, might involve some slight discomfort, change of routine, change of situation. But if you can stay clear and focused then that is where the miracles begin to happen. The universe will indeed conspire to see that your dreams, your aspirations, actually become reality. Mm -hmm. Now the universe always does that. Whether you think negatively or positively, the universe is always bringing you the fulfillment you are envisioning. Yeah. So if you envision that, of course it will dive, it will sink before it even takes off then what are you asking the universe to do for you? Mm. Dear universe, please sink me, sink my ship quickly. Correct? Yes. But you want the opposite. You want the universe to help you sail, to help you soar like the eagle, not sink like a lead weight. Yeah. So the point is that the more focused you become, just like utilizing a telescope, you can see more clearly what it is that you want, what you envision, what you hunger for, and prepare accordingly. Prepare the deeds to follow the mm. focus. Yes, and to that point, when things, what I find is when things happen that we don't want, that seems to uh, go against what we thought we were focusing on, we thought we knew what we wanted, we were, you know, thinking positive and thinking of it, and then something happened and it's like, whoa, what just happened there? What I came to realize is that those situations, those people are just an opportunity to get clearer, to gain that more and more focus on what you truly want. Like I remember uh, uh, when I first started my business and I was doing a workshop and it was, I started advertising this workshop in October and it was going to be happening in January. And I was doing everything I knew to do I was, and I was thinking positive, I clear about who I wanted in the room and what the workshop was about and, and we, I was doing all kinds of networking and putting up posters and it was about a week before Christmas and I had one person signed up for the workshop. Well, I was like getting depressed. I was like, okay, this is not working. And I remember uh, I was on my way to the gym and I was standing at my front door and I said to myself, okay, Barry, if this isn't what you want, what do you want? And I shut my eyes and I was like, I want someone else to f book the room. I want someone else to fill the room. I want them to just call me up and say, Barry, come. And I remember standing there and smiling, like with my eyes closed, smiling and vibrating this. And I'm like, yes. And I left and I went to the gym 
And then I came back and I literally, I looked at my phone, it was like 45 minutes later, and there was this email from a director that I used to work with in the government asking me to come to a staff day that she had two days later. She was gonna pay for my uh, overnight accommodation and of course my time and all of that stuff. And it was like, uh, you know, come and do this. I'm like, uh, yes. <laughs> so I know that once you get really clear and aligned with what you want, your, your focus on it, the universe conspires to bring you the situations, people, uh, opportunities to be able to act on that. Indeed. And to use another kind of analogy, say you want to prepare a nice dinner for friends and family. Mm -hmm. So that is the beginning. The idea is there. And then you may think, very fine indeed, what do I serve? So you begin clarity. You begin to work out a menu. You will prepare this, that, and that, and that meal. Yeah. Or dishes. You may have this kind of wine, this kind of water, this juice. You will utilize these dishes, these napkins, these tablecloths, this cutlery, so many other things. Then you have to focus. So you have made yourself clear, now you begin to focus. You make two, three, four dishes. You need all these ingredients, you need these recipes, you need this amount of time, you need to cook, you need to bake, you need to do this, you need to clean. So now you are focusing. You are going in deeper mm. into the project. So you've now made great headway. Mm -hmm. So that is good for this point. Now we would like to mention one other thing. Yep. We'll open an item on Joseph's computer. Okay. And you will relate to this because it is important. And actually, uh, just as you are doing this, uh, Joseph is actually <coughs> Serge. Uh, Joseph is Serge's, uh, what name do you, what do you, what, why do you call him Joseph? Because it is the name of the entity that Joseph is a focus of. We are not that entity. Okay. That's going to have to be a whole other video. Maybe. Keep going. So now, read what you have here. Orenda. O-R-E-N-D-A. Orenda. It's a noun. A mystical force present in all people that empowers them to affect the world or to affect changes in their own lives. I'm going to read that one more time. Orenda, a mystical force pres present in all people that empowers them to affect the world or to affect changes in their own life. Lives. Iroquois origin. Indeed. So it is from the Iroquois nation. Mm. So Orenda is a concept idea. And it is the most interesting because it fits in because this is what you are attempting to awaken yes. through your dharma mm -hmm. as a facilitator of awakening, mm -hmm. of fulfillment. So we simply thought to add this to the recipe for extra spice. Mm -hmm. It is a nice word and it will open up so many other doors and ideas that may encourage people to consider that they are more than the sum of all of their parts and their thoughts, more than the ideas that they have entertained about themselves, sometimes for decades, which has held them back. Mm -hmm. Clarity, focus, begins to clear the debris, clear the brush, mm -hmm. so that you can see what is underneath. Mm -hmm. Do continue, please. So, brings us to our third key. So we're doing the five keys. The third key is beliefs. And so what I've also found is that sometimes our beliefs hold us back from getting clear or focusing on what we want. And a belief is just a thought, thought over and over and over. And, it's, and, and sometimes we don't even realize that it's a belief. It, it's just, it's fact. So, you know, when Chris, when you just talked about a few minutes ago about the dinner party and so getting clear about, okay, I'm going to be, you know, doing dinner and here's what I'm going to be serving and, you know, and then inviting and focusing. Well, if, if the belief is, well, I'm not a very good cook, I'm inviting people over who they're much better chefs than I am, or are they going to like my meal? They're not going to like my meal. You know, I believe, and it's like, again, you get caught up in this circle and this, 
um, yeah, the spy can, can get caught up in the spiral downward. So identifying the beliefs that are going to hold you back, I think are, again, key in being able to live the, this kind of life that you want to lead with more joy and more purpose. You know, when I think back to that workshop again, there was something in me that wouldn't allow me to believe that someone else could book the room, fill the room, call me up. So it did, I didn't even go there. Once I finally like unlocked, it was like, whoa, wait, what do I, you know, ask myself again, what do I really want? It was like, then I could get clearer about the way that I wanted my business to be. So, and this is one of the things that I believe over the last few years of me kind of figuring out my, you know, who am I and what do I have to offer and what are my gifts? This is one thing that I believe I'm really good at is identifying those beliefs, whether it's the beliefs in me or beliefs in other people. When I have a conversation with them, I can't help but hear their language and uh, the things that they're telling themselves um, about what is possible. And what I believe is if you believe you can, then you can. If you believe you can't, then you can't. <laughs> what do you think, Chris? Indeed. We are in agreement on that. As you have suggested, beliefs are ideas that you have mulled over and over and over. That means that you have accepted an idea and you have given it strength, force, power over you mm -hmm. without realizing that you are the holder of the idea and not the other way around. So you have made yourself a prisoner of an idea or a concept, mm -hmm. fearing to step outside because you then begin to accept the notion that these ideas slash beliefs must be true because blah, 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 blank, blank, blank. And you will find literally dozens if not hundreds of justifications to the belief itself mm -hmm. and yet you can actually do the opposite when you encounter any kind of thought that minimize your sovereignty your authenticity as a being you can do a very simple thing when you look up into the sky mm -hmm. and you see all manner of beautiful clouds even on different layers of clouds and different type of clouds you do not grab mentally onto a cloud and say, this is the cloud, and that cloud defines me. Right. On the contrary, you look at it, and many people go, hey, it's a cloud, and it moves on. Mm. And the next cloud comes, and the next cloud comes. Storm clouds, snow clouds, autumn clouds, spring clouds. All manner of clouds. You are not necessarily going to sit your life grabbing onto every cloud and hope that it defines you. Right. But in many ways, many of the ideas that flow in and out of your awareness, you do just that. Mm. Because you cannot differentiate yourself, differentiate yourself from yourself and the ideas. Mm. You accept the notion that the idea must define you, otherwise why do you have it in your head? Mm. But the ideas are merely there as a potential and whatever it is, the sets of beliefs that you entertain about yourself, you will draw ideas, birds of a feather, together, and you will make clusters mm -hmm. and nations of ideas together that seem to justify your iniquities, your shame, your guilt, your fears, mm -hmm. and you will sink like a lead weight in quicksand. Mm -hmm. But what if you took a different approach? What if you looked at ideas? That's a very nice, very interesting, thank you very much idea. I will not mm, take the bait today. Mm. I will let you go like a cloud in the sky because mm. you are a cloud in my consciousness. Mm. You may come replete with all manner of concepts and potentials and possibilities but I want to choose something different today. I do not want the same old menu that I've been eating for 10, 20 or 30 years. I want a different kind of food. Mm. Today I want something that fulfills my soul. 
not just titillates me for the moment. Mm. Do you follow? I follow, and that actually leads us right into the fourth habit because what I find is that what you just went through is easy when I'm, um, when I have created the habits that support me. So when I've had enough sleep, or I'm eating well, I'm not drinking too much, I'm, I'm meditating. So then when things happen and these situations come in, I can notice right away, oh, oh look, a cloud, mm, an idea. Uh, you know what, this one doesn't serve me and I'm just gonna put it over here. However, when I'm not sleeping well, when you know maybe I'm watching way too much Netflix or uh, drinking the whole bottle of glass, a whole bottle of wine instead of uh, just a glass, um, and get into these again, I, I get out of my meditation and all of that. Then when the ideas come in, I attach to them, <laughs> and I um, and they swallow me up or spiral me yeah. down, right? And and takes me in longer fact, to get back up. This is where we can come back to the word orenda. That a mystical force present in all people that empowers them to affect the world or to affect change in their own lives. The last line is the most important to mm. affect changes in their own lives. Yeah. That is where this power comes from, and it comes from a certain kind of habit forming patterns, or if you want, discipline mm. and kind of mental discipline that regardless of the mental and emotional and psychological storms that may come your way, big or small, you still remain calm, you maintain your equilibrium, and you hold on to your roots. Mm. Good habits, good discipline, that the mind stays clear and focused, just like an oil lamp or a candle. If you do not want the wind to blow it out, you put glass over it, correct? Right, yeah. So it still breathes, but it's not affected. Mm. So you can develop those kinds of habits or discipline that it keeps you bright, clear, shiny, regardless of the storms in your life, so that you can see clearly, you can focus well, you can direct your energies, and so on and so forth. So there is a tremendous power, and in every individual, alive, past, present, and future, has always used that power, but may have been unaware of it. Mm -hmm. That is how you make changes in your life. Yeah. And everyone has made a change or another in their lives at some point and at multiple points. But it is about harnessing that power and making it work for you. Mm -hmm. We suggested earlier that if your thoughts and focus is on mm, iniquity, shame and guilt, then you are asking the universe to keep giving you more of the same. Right. It is about the plays that you engage in your mind's eye. So you want those to be productive, vibrant, powerful, filled with joy. And the same comes to you. Exactly, exactly. So just in case we have some new folks who have been joining, we've been talking about these five keys to unlock the door to a life filled with purpose, meaning, joy, and love. And so we talked about clarity, knowing you know who you are and what you want focus focusing on that which you want rather than what you don't want beliefs are beliefs holding you back are they supporting you or or, or are they um, um, keeping you frozen keeping you stuck and now habits so ha again a habit is something that you do without thinking like brushing your teeth and so this is uh, the fourth key habits and the fifth key that we'll talk about in a minute are the reason why I wanted to come up with this year of awakening that we're going to talk about in a minute because um, to form a habit, it's not about breaking old habits because if we, if we do that, we're focused on the bad habit or the old habit. And I don't even want to even call them bad. Uh, the old habit. What we want to do is focus on new habits. So what are those things that we can do uh, to, um, you know, create ourselves in this state, this, you know, uh, mystical force present in all people that empowers them to affect the world or to affect changes in their own lives, to be able to create this state where we can do this and, and ride these waves easily and naturally. And 
here's where one of the things, one of the habits that I've noticed uh, sometimes people have a tendency to do is focus outside of themselves. So focus on uh, and give their power to other people. So, oh, I can't do that because, you know, they haven't done this or that or whatever, or, oh, this person should or shouldn't have done or said this and that. And so one of my other uh, mentors, Byron Katie, uh, which, again, I've got another book to share with you, is something called Loving What Is. And what Byron Katie talks about is around investigating our thoughts and our beliefs and a, a key thing around where it pertains to uh, focusing on yourself is she has she talks about three kinds of business your business my business and God's business God or the universe whatever you want to call it so God's business is all of those things we can't control like the weather right it's wait, raining on my wedding day well you can't control the rain, rain on your wedding day you know that it's raining you your business your business is what you say what you do how you feel my business is what I say what I do what I how what I how I feel so if you say something to me then so often we go you know into the other person's business and have that habit of saying oh they shouldn't have said that they made me so upset and what I'm suggesting is we use that to go back into us and say our business is okay they said it right oh you're not you're not an expert Barry well and then I say to myself I'm not an expert and then I start feeling bad okay what am I saying to myself no I am an expert I am an expert in this certain area that I've defined as <laughs> I'm an expert in but I easily go, go into and hear those other voices and take them as my own so how can we what are some things that we can do to start recognizing that even though we are connected and these people that come into our lives you know are here to help us get to know ourselves better how can that happen in more, in more of a gentle way a more loving way to ourselves <clears throat> that is indeed a very important point to keep in mind many people if not all people one way or another have accepted the opinions, the opinions of others, as if it is about them, about themselves. But these are only the opinions of people, and let us put it this way, these are the opinions these people have about themselves, mm. and they have projected onto others, and you have accepted them. So in a certain way, you have poisoned your own well yeah. with the opinions of others, it is toxic. Mm -hmm. Some people recognize this as the voice of their mother or father who may have mistreated them as they were growing up. And that voice may never completely change. They still run it in the back of their mind, an old program. Mm -hmm. Joseph was struck one day by a homeless individual who also had some difficult mental challenges. And whenever this individual would walk by on the street and in a storefront window would see his reflection, he would go up to that reflection and dash his forehead and call himself any number of derogatory terms. Mm. And Joseph understood that this was a program that that individual had running in his head, mm. most likely from his early childhood, ingrained in him from parental figures. So many individuals have a similar program and seem unable to get off that hamster wheel. Yes. But there are many different ways to break those patterns and to begin shifting. And we would be most happy if during your year of awakening, you teach the tapping we showed you mm -hmm. as an immediate and effective tool to break the circuitry of the patterns and to begin creating that peaceful space where new ideas, new patterns can be instilled. Mm -hmm. because you are creatures of habit whether you want to believe it or not watch what you do your functions during the day and you will be surprised at how habitual you are yes. and it is not only in the physical level the mental level all the old movies you play in your brain 
not movies from the theater, though sometimes that is involved, but it is about your growing up. And whenever you have conflict, disappointment, it is about you and the voices you entertain. Do you remember in the Harry Potter movies when Harry is in the classroom with his friends and classmates and the teacher opens a cupboard and in the cupboard are Bogarts, mm. creatures that magnify your own self-directed fears. Mm. And what is the cure? Laugh. Find a comic point to diffuse the energy. Yeah. So we are not suggesting you all become Harry Potter, but we are suggesting that there are many different ways to diffuse those programs, that energy, and free yourselves. You do not want to go to your grave always wondering what else you could have become then. The put-downs others have put on you. Does that make sense? Yeah. So it is a powerful awakening that you are talking about. Mm -hmm. And you are the facilitator of that awakening. Mm -hmm. And if we can assist, then we are humbly mm, disposed in this way. Thank you, Chris. And this actually nice lead into our fifth key. So we heard clarity, focus, beliefs, habits. And the fifth key is support. So often we think we're alone. We think we have to do it by ourselves. I don't. I know in my world, and for me personally, um, asking for help isn't something that I do easily. Uh, after I was diagnosed with breast cancer, uh, it really um, uh, kind of unlocked that door where I started to do that. And the receiving. Um, they kind of go hand in hand in being able to receive help as well. So I see support in three different ways. One is the belief that the universe supports you. I know for me, I believe that the universe supports me, that the things that happen don't happen to me, they happen for me. That I may not know the reason or feel good at the time, but I know in the end that everything that happens is for my best interest. So that's the first part of support. The second is you must support you, right? When situations happen, how can you support you better in the situation? You know, and I, again, this brings me to another book, Louise Hay. And you can heal your life. And she has another one, uh, you can heal your body. This is about loving yourself. And this is one of the key things that came out of, one of my lessons that, I, that came out of uh, breast cancer. Um, and cancer is the... The, the best one to talk about here because cancer, it's all about, we gotta fight cancer. Well, what Louise Hay talked about, what I learned from her years ago was, we don't, we don't wanna, f we need to start loving ourselves, sending love to our bodies, sending love to the dis-ease in our bodies rather than, um, rather than hate, rather than fighting it. So how you can support you is when something is going on in your body, it's here to tell you something. So ask yourself, how can I support me in this situation? Elbow, what are you telling me? You know, when um, you know, I decided to uh, leave my government job, um, and, you know, six figures, been there 21 years, decided I was leaving and starting my own business, uh, did not acknowledge, I guess I didn't realize the fear I had, and in this uh, Heal Your Body um, book, it talks about that elbows are, um, are all about changing directions. And so I realized, wow, I'm not acknowledging that fear that I had, acknowledging, you know, I would have a tendency to sweep it under the rug that, you know, I'm, I'm not a complainer. I would, you know, my habit is to, if something bad happens, it's okay, how do I get really, how do I get clear and to start focusing on what it is that I want rather than what I don't want as opposed to supporting myself and saying, okay, Barry, like, oh, go into this. Like, I'm scared or I'm, you know, whatever. Like, really feel it and then move <clears throat> past it. And the, okay, how do I move past it? And this goes to the third part of support. There are other people here that can support you. Like, 
friends and family. I just came from staying with my good friend Susie. Hi Susie, if you're watching, you know, and asking for support and getting her to, you know, help me walk through something and, and um, you know, figure something out that I'd been like, you know, I'm stuck on. Or, you know, didn't know how to do Facebook Live on my computer. So there's gotta be a YouTube video for it, right? Go on to YouTube, there's books, there's, so again, this is where this Year of Awakening program came from. This is where I want to support you. I've asked Chris Sayers and Chris to come and support you on helping to embed and create these five keys into our life and over this year-long process. So before I move on to the Year of Awakening, I want to give you a chance to talk about the support and what I've just said. <clears throat> now, there are perhaps many, many different perspectives on these. It is important to understand that one cannot simply consider something is out of sight, therefore it is out of mind. Mm -hmm. So this applies here as well. You have been raised in a rather impersonal world, a culture and a society that puts profit, consumerism, above the merits of the individual with the idea that perhaps consumer goods can fulfill the individual. Mm. The only thing that fulfills the individual is another individual. You are social beings. Even the cells of your body all function together to give you the best possible outcome that result from your thoughts and your beliefs, your focus, your clarity, mm. and the support you provide your body. When you do not provide your body with any support, then you begin to experience a disconnect. Just like people may live in an apartment building their whole lives and do not even know the neighbor across the street or across the way. So the idea here that you are offering is that there is support at all levels. Mm -hmm. And that is what a real family implies. The idea of the nuclear family where parents work, children watch themselves or are watched by the television, mm. grow up by themselves, leave home, get rid of the parents, they themselves repeat the cycle, are gotten rid of in old age, is most disheartening. And you may not recognize it, but people do not want to go there. They do not want to edge and end up in that same situation. They want to feel as if they are important, as if they matter, mm -hmm. as if somehow or other someone cares for them that can only become your reality when you begin to care about yourself. Exactly. So this is the deepest awakening and that alone enhances all the other elements of clarity, focus, habit and so on and so forth. So that is a most powerful tool and you can easily cultivate it even through your technology which in many instances encourages that impersonalism but you can use it to encourage a personal relationship. Mm. So make use of it. Mm. That is also a great power. Mm. Utilize it. Mm. I love that. So to summarize the five keys, clarity. Get clear about who you are and what you want. And then focus. Focus on that which you want and focus on you not on everything that ha that's happening outside. Use those outside influence situations, people to again get clearer and, and focused back on you. Look at your beliefs. Are they holding you back? Are they supporting you? Right? If the belief is working for you, then keep it. If it's not, then let's investigate our thoughts and create better feeling thoughts, beliefs that, again, that support us. Habits, what are the habits? that are supporting you and and what are new habits that you can get into that will that will help you move forward and then support right universe supports you you support you and there are others like Chris and I and Serge to support you
So that takes us to this year of awakening. So the year of awakening is a, a year, it's 12 months. There are, we've created, I've created monthly themes. So as an example, January is clarity. Uh, February is self love. Uh, March is, uh, I kind of did the play on words with the, um, uh, what do you call it, St. Patrick's Day. So I've called it, it's not about luck. So there'll be a theme each month, two calls a month at night from about seven till nine o'clock. Uh, Chris and I on the calls, they'll be recorded. So if you miss them, you can always uh, catch up and listen to them later at your own time. There will be a video. Chris and I are going to be doing a video each month. At the beginning of each month, send it out to you around each of the themes. Chris is going to be doing a meditation on that theme. So as an example for January, he'll do a meditation around clarity and we're going to encourage you to do that meditation every day. We want to, in this year of you, help you create these habits, this support system that can make this, you know, again, I'm going to read the Arenda again, a mystical force present in all people that empowers them to affect the world or to affect changes in their own life. So really embedding that. So this program, uh, up until the early bird price, until uh, December 15th, is $4.97 plus HST. And so for those uh, in other countries, HST is 13% here. And, um, or if you, and that's if you pay in full, or that it's $50 a month if you want to do monthly. I wanted to create this so that um, it was affordable, that we could reach as many people as possible and make this, again, affordable for you know this kind of a, um, uh, this type of information that we're gonna be sharing. So you can go to my webpage, www.mydharma, so M-Y-D as in dog, H-A-R-M-A dot C-A, and you'll see on the, uh, there's the first bar, it says Year of Awakening. Click on that. And, um, and any questions that you have, also please feel free to email me. And so once the videos, um, once we're not live anymore, I'll also post that uh, link um, underneath the video. And we'll be putting the video on YouTube and posting it other. So, so if you didn't get a chance to watch the whole thing, you'll be able to see the whole thing again later. Anything else you'd like to add? about the program or not at this point simply that the endeavor is certainly magnanimous and the results are filled with grace mm -hmm. so grace and appreciation for who you are will certainly be beneficial wonderful indeed then we thank you for your consideration and return Joseph to you. So we're just gonna give it a minute here and we'll bring uh, Serge back. And as I said, if you missed it, uh, Chris calls Serge Joseph. So same person, Joseph, Serge, Chris, all in here. <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> Well, we had a uh, great, or I thought we had a great chat with Chris, and we talked about the five keys, and uh, we've had a few people coming on and mm -hmm. listening, and uh, so thank you so much, Serge. Yeah, my pleasure. Being a part of so this. So how long was this? Oh, it doesn't tell you. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. Okay. Yeah. So thank you so thank much, you. and have a wonderful afternoon, and thank you to everyone who joined live. I so appreciate it. It was really cool seeing uh, folks' names, um, you know, Tony and Alan and Linda and... Um, uh, lots of people have been on, so thank you so much. Alrighty, bye.